Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, my beautiful soul, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. I had an amazing conversation today with a friend that inspired this episode, and I could not go to bed until I recorded it. So just guess where I'm recording this episode right now. Just just guess. Like we're on the saga of random locations in Catherine's life. I swear this has been a really weird year. (laughs) We're in the final stretch where I'm finally going to have a freaking office again and a podcast studio. Like it's about time. We've been all over the place, all over the world. I'm currently in my hotel room in Vegas. We are moving out tomorrow. So I'm out of the house officially moving to Arizona and my baby is sleeping in the living room. My husband's in the bedroom and your girl is in the closet because she needs silence. So welcome to my podcast studio today. (laughs) I really wanted to get this episode out here because it is fresh and I want to talk about quantum leaps and both me and my friend are in the middle of a quantum leap and she asked me for my advice today and how I normalize quantum leaps. And the advice that I gave to her was very surprising to me, actually, because it's not the advice that I normally give. Now, let me give you some context before I get into it. And I will share at the end or towards the end of this episode, after I explain what a quantum leap is, how do you normally normalize it for anyone out there who's like, I'm going through a lot of life changes really fast. Oh my God, everything I want is happening so quickly. What do I do? Holy crap, it's way too much for my nervous system. Ah, I feel dysregulated. What do I do? Woo! Right? I'll give you some really good advice and then I'll share with you what I told my friend that I don't, like I've never said before. And it's so fucking good in my humble opinion. (laughs) So why you shouldn't normalize a quantum leap too quickly. What is a quantum leap? Okay, I feel like this is a word that's thrown around a lot in the manifestation community. I'm pretty sure you know this word, but just in case, quantum leap is something that is experienced when life changes in your favor. So this is a really good thing, very fast, in a very big way. Like when the manifestation that you desire It could be one manifestation. It could be a really big manifestation. It could be your whole life changing overnight. And it shows up so much faster than you expected in a totally unexpected way. Okay. Now, what ends up happening that is unfortunate for so many people is that many people experience a freak out when they quantum leap. And that's because when life shifts in a really fast way, where your nervous system doesn't have time to acclimate to what's happening and what's going on. And even though this is something you so deeply wanted and desired, there's this surge of all these unfamiliar experiences that are causing unfamiliar emotions. It's like one thing to, you know, imagine how it's going to go and imagine, oh yeah, this is how I'm going to (laughs) feel. And then it actually happens and you're like, oh my God, what is going on? And you think it's like such a surprise, right? Our gut reaction is typically to push it away and to make it stop. And we do this unconsciously because what is unfamiliar to the unconscious is 
just automatically deemed unsafe, right? Even if consciously we're like, no, this is safe. This is good. Oh my God, more money. Oh my God, I met the man of my dreams. Oh my God, I'm falling in love. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, if it's unfamiliar, it's marked unsafe. So it causes a massive dysregulation in our nervous system. And we reach what is called an upper limit. So that is, that is coined by um, the author, Gay Hendricks. He wrote an amazing book that I highly recommend. It, uh, recommend. I read it years and years and years ago. It's called The Big Leap. And basically, it's where we've reached the max capacity of how much love, how much success, how much abundance and joy that we can allow ourselves to feel in any given moment. And this is based off of our programming. So it's not like we were born with some sort of capacity. We are all infinite beings, right? In human form, we actually have infinite capacity. But based off of our life experiences and off of our belief systems and off of the programming that we have been programmed with as children growing up in this world, that experiences and practices a lot of limitations for whatever reason, right? We have given ourselves a certain capacity. We give ourselves a certain level of permission as to this much love, this much success, this much abundance, this much joy is socially appropriate for me to feel in order for me to still fit in and belong as a member of society, right? That's where we're afraid of being too much. Like I can't be too successful. I can't be too rich. I can't be too this because then people will be jealous or I have to experience just enough X, Y, Z. Like I got to experience just enough success, just enough abundance, just enough uh, beauty or just enough uh, fitness, right? So that I'm deemed to be cool and people will want to hang out with me and know me and be with me, right? So that's where the capacity comes from. But we actually have infinite capacity. It's just how much do we allow ourselves to experience? So with this capacity, with the upper limit, when we reach you know, our limits on the upper end, this is where we get so close to getting what we want. Maybe we even get what we want. And then last minute, it poofs out of our reach. This has happened to me so many times with this house search, with this house manifestation that I finally manifested, where the perfect rental, the perfect home, the perfect situation would just get ripped out of my hands. Like what the F, right? And the key to finalizing, the key to crystallizing, the key to keeping and maintaining a quantum leap is to normalize it. So typically when something happens in my life that finally manifests, I go right into the process of normalization so that I don't scare it away. And I actually like, it's so funny with this house uh, move, it's like my nervous system is starting to get dysregulated because it's like, finally, I'm getting exactly what I want on my own terms. And as a result, you know, moving is chaotic. And so I'm letting the chaos get to me. And it's like, I finally noticed where I'm like, hold on a second. I'm I'm reaching an upper limit here. All right. And then my friend texted me and she's like, yo, I'm reaching an upper limit with my launch. Like help me through this. Right. So how we normalize a quantum leap is we regulate our nervous system in the midst of it. So we want to show ourselves on both a conscious and unconscious level that this is normal. That's what we mean by normalizing, (laughs) that this is something our future self, aka now we're experiencing it, our present self experiences all the time. Now, think of the thermostat theory where we have like this metaphorical temperature range within ourselves that we unconsciously feel the most comfortable and familiar with, okay? So for example, when life gets too cold, okay, it's not like we have a real thermostat, but it's like this unconscious thermostat. It's a metaphorical thermostat where we have 
this temperature range of how much it's, it's the capacity, right? The lower temperature is the lower capacity. The higher temperature is the higher capacity. And like a thermostat, we unconsciously sense when we're on the lower end, the higher end, above the higher end or below the lower end. So when life gets too cold, well, what does the thermostat do? It kicks up the, the uh, heater, right? It heats things up. So we unconsciously will do whatever needs to be done to heat up life, to heat up whatever aspect of life that just went too cold. So for example, if it's financially, if we're used to a certain number in our bank account and that number goes below the number of what we're used to, we will unconsciously attract the money we need to make up for the lost balance. This happens on an unconscious level. So either you'll receive an unexpected check, an unexpected bonus, or just automatically you go into creative mode and you're like, it's okay. I'm going to bam, 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 bam. This is how I'm going to make the money back. And somehow by the end of the month, the balance is right there within the temperature range. Now, if life gets too hot, which is a good thing, we want it to keep heating up and heating up and heating up. But let's say that this month you manifested an extra client or you got a bonus at work or you started a side hustle or something like that. And you made 6K this month when you're used to making 4K. Well, if this is something that makes you unconsciously uncomfortable, again, unconsciously. And I say unconsciously because consciously we're like, this is great. This is fantastic. More money. Yes. But if we're unconsciously uncomfortable with it, we will actually find an excuse. We, we all of a sudden find something to buy that we tell ourselves, ooh, but I need this, right? Instead of holding on to that money, keeping that money, Uh, utilizing it in some other way, investing it, adding it to savings, paying off debt. We're like, ooh, I like that handbag. Ooh, I like those shoes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, you're inviting me on a trip. I want to come, right? So unconsciously spend the money. Or we can attract an unexpected bill or circumstance that, you know, causes us to spend money. Like maybe we had a health thing happened where we had to go to the ER or um, our tire goes flat on our car and we have to buy new tires or whatever it is. And it brings us right back to only having that 4K in the bank. So that's that thermostat that we have within us. And so the process of normalization is what allows a quantum leap to stabilize where we acclimate to the new temperature, the new hot, 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 really good temperature. Okay, I guess we become like reptiles or something. I don't know. <laughs> like we can we we train ourselves to absorb more heat, I guess, so that we can keep repeating the results we desire on repeat without it dysregulating our nervous system. And then of course you're always going to reach a new level, right? This is something, it's like a never ending freaking process, right? Because there's no end to how much you can be, do and have in this lifetime. So you will typically, you know, if you manifest things really slowly, like that gives you an opportunity to acclimate, but there will be moments where oh my God, you got your dream job literally overnight, right? You got fired from your job and then you got your dream job offered the next day. Like, holy shit, talk about a life change. Or you started a business and one of your posts promoting your business, like let's say you created a product, a t-shirt business or whatever. One of your posts went viral and everyone and Sally and their dog and their aunt wants to buy your t-shirt. And, you know, for Christmas, all of a sudden you make a million dollars overnight, like holy fucking shit, right? That's what I'm talking about here. (laughs) So we want to adjust to this new temperature so that we can hold on to this result. We can keep uh, manifesting like this on repeat without it dysregulating us to such a degree where we repel it, right? That's the key here. So ways that I typically stabilize a quantum leap. So this is my typical action steps or typical practices or typical advice that I give to people. 
Number one is the most basic. And in fact, it's so basic. You're going to roll your eyes at me. And I, I tell you, like most people go, that's it. Like, well, no, that's not it. But that's one massive step that actually does more magic than you think, which is deep, intentional breathing. So literally just pausing before you get reactive, before you act from a reactive state of mind that is operating from a past program, before you delete something, you know, do something, spend something, do something to make it stop. Stop, pause, breathe. Deep, deep breaths or I'll do a breathwork session if time allows, that will just help me move energy and just signal to my body that all is well. Because in a dysregulated state, if you actually tune in, you are shallow breathing or barely breathing at all. So when you're like, (sighs) that can literally induce a panic attack because you're telling your body that you should be having a panic attack. But if you're breathing calmly, slowly, just taking a moment to like step aside and be like, I'm okay, like it's okay, then, you know, your physiology will help your mind follow. The mind follows the body, the body follows the mind. It truly is one. Like there's mind body connection, it's all one because all of it, in my opinion, is the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind rules the body and rules the mind as well. It honestly rules all. So that's like the first go-to thing that I'll do. And as I do that, I will remind myself, I will tune into my future self and I will remind myself, I'll see her and, and realize the fact that she lives this reality all of the time. And I will tune into her process. Like I'll see the connection between me right now and me and her there and realize that at one point she crossed this crossroads, this crossroad of discomfort, this crossroad of chaos, this crossroad of uncertainty, right? But she got there. She exists. My future self is there. She got there. So obviously it's possible for me. All I need to do is I just need to realize that if I just sit for a few moments with a few uncomfortable emotions, because <laughs> that's all it is, it will pass before I know it. Because she's living proof that I can get through this. This quantum leap is here to stay because she lives it every day. It's normal for her. And I'll see that she also felt a little wonky on the path there. And all that wonkiness was, was a few uncomfortable emotions and a few uncomfortable sensations. And that's all it comes down to. And I have a mantra as I do this. And I've this, like, I don't know why I'm getting goosebumps right now, but for whatever reason, I guess this is a message that really needs to pass through, which this mantra has changed the game for me while I'm doing the deep breathing, while I'm reminding myself of my future self and tuning in, I tell myself, I am the type of person for whom this is normal. I am the type of person for whom this is a regular occurrence. And I'll just repeat that over and over and over again. I'm the type of person for whom this is normal. I'm the type of person for whom this is a regular occurrence. And of course, you can like shift this and change this however you want, but this has been magical for me. And then if I'm still struggling, I'll go and co-regulate with my partner, which is a powerful way to regulate your nervous system with another person who seems to be quite regulated in their state. So you can borrow them for your own nervous system regulation. So I will see that my partner, typically we never feel the same upper limit. We never feel it in the same way he'll have his upper limit. And usually I'm like, what are you worried about? What? What? Okay, let me help you with this. And then I will go through an upper limit. And he's like, Catherine, stop upper limiting. Like I can see your upper limiting. Let me help you through this. And I'll just spend time in his energy. I will talk it through him. We will hug. We will co-breathe together. Just being with him, being with someone who's not 
stressing or overwhelmed or worried like I am is so potent for me for my co-regulation, especially because I have so much trust and we're so linked together, you know, as a married couple who spends 24 seven together, literally working together, raising a kid together, just being in each other's energies all the time, that co-regulation works really well for us. And then I'll, I will go on to like, if I'm still feeling overwhelmed, making sure I'm disconnected from electronics and taking a moment to spend time from spend, spend time away from influences that overstimulate me. So typically that's like social media or electronics, just being away from the things that overstimulate me because I realize that maybe I'm feeling overwhelmed because I'm feeling overstimulated <laughs> and the overstimulation is only adding to the overwhelm, which then makes it unbearable, right? Um, I will also connect with my heart. And this is a, a tip, a trick that uh, Gay Hendricks recommends. This is inspired by the big leap, one of the mantras, which is um, how can I expand? Well, it's more of a question. I frame it as a question for myself. I connect with my heart and I ask it, how can I expand into even more love, even more success and even more abundance right now? And this is coming from, you know, my philosophy, my belief, my theory, my truth that great questions inspire great answers. So I love the practice of asking myself really good questions. And this is a really good one. Just like asking myself, how can I expand into even more love, even more success and even more abundance right now? It like stretches me in the best way possible to realize, oh, this is all you got, bitch. Like, let's go more. <laughs> like, let's, let's, let's expand into more. You're capable of receiving so much more. And then just like connecting, like if I feel that the reason I feel this way is because I'm feeling the feelings of unworthiness come up. If I feel any indication that I might not be worthy of this quantum leap, this is where I connect with a higher power. I connect with God. I connect with universe, creator, whatever it is that you connect with. You can call it whatever you want. I like to interchange between God, universe, infinite intelligence, divine intelligence, divinity, creator, supreme creator, whatever it is. And I remind myself that the way that God sees me is that my worthiness is innate. Just like I see my child, my son, Orion, his worthiness is absolutely innate. Like there's nothing he can or can't do to take away his worthiness of my love, right? And so we are seen the same way through the eyes of our creator. We are God in human form. We are divine. It's our birthright to have everything that we desire. This is where what is desired by me is destined for me. That mantra that I use all the time comes from. It, it comes from the fact that the word desire comes from the Latin root, de and sire, which means of the father which means of God. So when you desire something, it's not because you have some selfish, random thought of like, oh, I want this for myself for no reason. Like, no, there's a much bigger reason behind the things that we want. So the fact that you got what you wanted through this quantum leap is such an expression of God manifesting what he or she or it or <clears throat> whatever wants for itself. It wants to experience this and it chose you to experience it through you because you had the desire. That means the, the, the energy was supposed to be manifested through you. Okay. So this is my typical advice. All right. So, so far I've gone along my path and then until my advice wasn't my typical advice for my friend today who is currently going through a quantum leap. And this is another thing that I think it's important for you to also understand and know and appreciate and have gratitude for. Not because anything in the normalization process that I typically follow should be changed or that it's not a good thing to normalize a quantum leap, but instead I just had a different perspective. 
the outcome of the quantum leap, which in this case was a million dollar launch for my friend, right? She's very much on the path, having her biggest launch ever. It's like all so exciting. And she's like, oh my God, right? And she's like, Heather, what do I do? How do you do this? How do you normalize this? And I told her, I realized that this million dollar launch one day will be so a part of her normal launch routine that one day she's going to miss the feeling of the first one. This extreme high that she feels right now, that she felt the first time it happened, by the time it normalizes, she's going to miss it. And I know this because I tuned right into this as she asked me this question. So many normalized experiences in my life, like, for example, being able to write a $50,000 check to an organization that I believe in, just on a random Tuesday, like, here's a 50K check, like, what? That's now normalized for me. To be able to generate $3 million launches in five days in my business, like, that is normalized. Having a million dollar day. Uh, the day I married my best friend, you know, the fact that I'm married to my best friend, it's like so normalized. I gave birth to my son who I prayed for and dreamed of for years and he's here and I'm with him every day and now it's normalized. Sometimes I look back and I wish I could go back to the first time it all happened and feel the rush of it all. You know, I, I really went back to my first million dollar launch. And I was like, oh my God, that excitement, that rush, that thrill. And so I told her to let her heart race. She's like, Heather, my heart is racing. Let it race. My mind is racing. Ah, let it race. I told her to let her be blown away by what's happening. Let her excitement take over because it's not going to last forever. And she said, Catherine, it's like falling in love. And I was like, yes, it's like falling in love. Falling in love is so uncertain. It's scary, but it's like a rush, right? You don't know if the other person feels the same way about you. You don't know if they're going to commit to you. Your heart races when you're with them. You're so overwhelmed, but yet so excited at the same time. You're counting down the days to the next time you're going to see them. Like just so much extreme happening. Such a thrill is happening all at once. And when you're, you know, with the person, when you're with that person for, five years, 10 years, once things have normalized, sometimes you look back and you're like, I missed the beginning when it was all still a thrill. And even if you're in a very amazing, incredible relationship where you're experiencing new levels to your relationship and you keep things exciting in different ways. And yes, like it's, you don't actually want to go back. You really love the way things are now, but still Nothing will ever compare to the first moments you experienced falling in love with that person. And it's the same with the quantum leap. You will miss the thrill of manifesting this for the first time. You will miss having it all snowball into your life. Yes, it's ungrounding at times. Yes, it's chaotic. Like my my week has been so ungrounding and so chaotic. It's like a holy fuckaroni moment for me and for my friend right now. But letting it just be that way and like having gratitude for it and having appreciation and being the observer of it. And like, it's like, it's like sitting on the roller coaster and having fun while you're on the ride rather than reminiscing of, oh yeah, do you remember that fun roller coaster that we went on yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago? Like you're on the roller coaster right now. So have fun while you're on the roller coaster right now. Letting it be that way and not rushing the process of normalization is another version of normalization. And that was my realization today. 
reveling, reveling, I don't know that word, but I'm going to use it. (laughs) Don't know how to say it. Reveling in the excitement, sitting in the excitement, not trying to stuff down or fix the high extremes, but just knowing it is an extreme. It's a very high extreme. But one day, this will be a random Tuesday for you. But for now, it's not. And you can enjoy. You can have gratitude. You can feel appreciation for this extreme feeling while it lasts. And of course, listen, if it does get too much for you, go back to what I talked about in the normalization tips and techniques, of course. They're always there for you when you are ready to implement them. But for now, just let it be. And that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I so appreciate you always sharing this podcast, leaving your reviews, leaving your feedback, tagging me as you're listening to the episodes. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea. I hope you have an amazing day and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.